femur protocol is technically two views, an AP and a lateral, but because of the length of the femur, you end up taking about four films in reality, depending on how long they are. So you're going to do AP proximal femur, which will be from hip as far down as you can go on a 1417. Then you're going to go from knee up to get the distal portion and make sure an overlap. We do a frog lateral of the proximal hip and then a lateral knee up of the distal end. There's going to be a range of techniques here due to the fact that you're going to be in different areas. So up at the hip will be our higher numbers. It might be 16 to 20, um, depending on the size of the femur. Down at the knee end will be closer to more of a knee technique. So it might even be as low as 8 mass, 10 mass, 12.5 mass, something like that. It's going to be around 80 kvp unless they are small and you could be in the 75 range. So AP proximal femur, you're going to go hip down. Patient supine, you're going to use your 1417 cassette lengthwise. They're going to internally rotate their legs 15 to 20 degrees. So you make a little triangle with their toes. I place the top of my light at ASIS. I put my marker at the bottom point of my light field. This helps me when I need to overlap my images, and I'll show you guys that in lab. Essentially, you need to get the hip joint down as far as you can on the image. The toes are rotated in to kind of decrease this lesser trochanter here. Then depending on the size of their leg, you're going to either use a 10 by 12 or another 14, 17. You need to overlap your light field. So you're going to want the bottom of your light just below the knee to ensure that you have shown the entire femur. You want the knee in true AP position. So rotate that leg however much you need to to get it in true AP. This will, we call this one knee up. So this is your distal femur, knee up, making sure you overlap your light fields. The frog leg lateral. Uh, you're going to have the patient bend their knee and extend out at least 45 degrees. We call it a frog leg just because of the position of it. Central ray is to mid femoral neck. The text might turn the collimator to be on the same sort of line here as the leg. So you might see that. I keep mine straight. And then you're going to set the patient up really similar to that of a lateral knee. I turn them on the affected side. I bring this other leg up in the front, okay? Same bend of the knee. Watch your shadow of light. Make sure the bottom of the knee is on and then you're gonna get as far up as you can. This is another version here. This is how I want your leg to be, leg up and over. Ideally, you have from knee up in lateral position as far as you can. If they can't turn on their side, you're going to do a trauma lateral or a cross table lateral. Place similar to that of the cross table knee for ER. Some sponges underneath to raise them up off the stretcher and away from the bottom of the cassette, trying to get midpoint of the cassette. Knee in as AP as possible, you're going to shoot cross table. If you see a fracture, don't rotate the patient. Don't turn them into a frog position. Don't try and move that leg around. You take them as they lie. Pediatrics may be able to fit tabletop, uh, depending on the size of the pediatric patient on your digital cassette. You may be able to go corner to corner and fit them on one image, saving them some exposures. Know your anatomy. And you may see these in the OR. For the femur fractures, there's the... Um, and I am rotting here of the femur for to help with femur fracture with the nails going through for support. You might see plates and screws put in. Review all your types of fractures for this test. I want you to know those as well.